Thoracic outlet syndrome is actually a complex of four different conditions. The four types of thoracic outlet syndrome are anterior scalene syndrome, which occurs between the anterior and middle scalene muscles, costoclavicular syndrome, which occurs between the first rib, costo means rib, and the clavicle, pectoralis minor syndrome, which occurs between the pectoralis minor muscle and the rib cage, and the fourth type is called cervical rib thoracic outlet syndrome, and that's caused by a genetic variant, in which case the person has a small beginning of a rib that forms off the transverse process of C7. Of these four types of thoracic outlet syndrome, manual therapy, movement therapy, and body work can be very beneficial for anterior scalene syndrome, costoclavicular syndrome, and pectoralis minor syndrome. In all four cases, the underlying concept of thoracic outlet syndrome is that there is compression of neurovascular contents. The brachial plexus of nerves runs between the anterior and middle scalenes, between the clavicle and first rib, and between the pectoralis minor and rib cage. The subclavian and then axillary artery, a continuation of the subclavian artery, runs between the anterior and middle scalenes, the clavicle and first rib, and the pec minor and rib cage. And the subclavian vein, axillary vein, runs between the clavicle and first rib and the pectoralis minor and the rib cage. The concept is that the thorax outlets into the upper extremity feeding neurovascular information, nervous information, neural information, as well as arterial supply down and venous supply back up. So these vessels outlet from the thorax into the upper extremity, hence the name thoracic outlet syndrome. The causes for these various types, anterior scalene syndrome is caused by a tight anterior and middle scalene muscle. Very often that occurs when the client has a forward head posture. Okay. Costoclavicular syndrome occurs when either the clavicle collapses down against the first rib or the first rib is pulled up against the clavicle. Very often the clavicle collapses down against the first rib when we have a slumped posture, what's known as upper crossed syndrome. Relax back, come back up, I should say. And then also, if someone has a breathing disorder where they're laboring for their breathing, very often they will be pulling their first rib up against the clavicle as the other cause for costoclavicular syndrome. And pectoralis minor syndrome is caused by a tight pec minor, which also occurs with a slumped, rounded posture to the shoulder girdle because the shoulder girdle is protracted and depressed downward, which causes a shortening and tightening of the pec minor. There are orthopedic assessment tests that can assess the presence of either anterior scalene, costoclavicular, or pec minor syndrome. In all three tests, what the therapist needs to do is find the radial pulse of the client, feel for the radial pulse, and what I'm going to be looking for in each of these tests is whether or not the strength, not the rate, the pulse, but the strength of the radial pulse diminishes. If it is, this is an indication that there is compression of the subclavian artery, axillary artery, feeding blood down toward the radial artery. If I find that diminished strength of the pulse, it's an indication that there might also be compression on the brachial plexus of nerves as they travel down through, which might be the reason why someone is having neural symptoms, perhaps paresthesia, altered sensation in the upper extremity, or perhaps weakness of some musculature that's innervated by the motor neurons of these brachial plexus nerves. The orthopedic assessment test for anterior scalene syndrome is called ADSENSE test. I find the pulse, the radial pulse, 
Now what I'd like you to do, Catherine, is I'd like you to rotate, perfect, rotate your head and neck toward me. Stay rotated toward me, but drop your head and neck back onto your left shoulder. This maximally stretches the right anterior scalene and it stretches the middle scalene on the right side. Pulling them taut, if they were already tight, would further cause possible compression on the neurovascular structures running between them. You can relax and come out of that position. If I felt a diminished pulse, or if the client reported any symptoms going down into the upper extremity, that would tell me that it's a positive AdSense test, and therefore there's the presence of anterior scalene syndrome version of thoracic outlet syndrome. The next test for costoclavicular syndrome is called Eden's test. I again find the radial pulse and feel for its strength. I would now like you to stick your chest out and your shoulder girdle back as if you're standing in front of a commanding officer. This pushes the first rib anteriorly and it pulls the clavicle back posteriorly and it diminishes the costoclavicular space. If I feel a diminished strength of pulse, or if the client reports any neural symptoms into this side, upper extremity, that's a positive Eden's test, which shows the presence of costoclavicular syndrome. You can go into a more relaxed posture. For pectoralis minor syndrome, the orthopedic assessment test is Wright's test. There are two versions of Wright's test. In each case, again, I find the strength of the radial pulse. In the first version, I'm going to move her arm back behind her body. This causes a stretching of the pectoralis minor, and again, a positive is determined by either a diminished strength of pulse or neural symptoms reported by the client into the upper extremity. The other version for rights, again finding the strength of the radial pulse, I then bring her up into this position, which tethers the neurovascular vessels around the pec minor, and again I feel for a diminished strength of the radial pulse or the client reporting neural symptoms into the upper extremity. If the client were to have a cervical rib, very often that will show positive also with AdSense test that was done for the anterior scalene syndrome version. But definitive assessment or diagnosis for a cervical rib would be with a radiograph, an x-ray.